Okay. Someone made this for me. Uh, it took a lot of work because he had to paint on all the designs and all this stuff and uh, removable jacket, which is crazy. It's amazing to me. I think this is the this is the great the greatest thing about indie wrestling is that like not about indie wrestling, but in wrestling as a general, like I talk about my connection with the fans and things like that. I get cool little gifts like this that mean the world to me because like when I was a kid, when like. I loved action figures and to have like someone actually make me an action figure, it's just surreal. It's a surreal experience. I, it's not lost on me. I, it's really cool. The way that I view fans. I don't view them as these random people that are just spending money and you know I should just take their money and forget about them you know it's I got their money already who cares they bought a t-shirt oh cool whatever that's $20 it doesn't matter the most important thing in the world to me is that these people just think I'm good I don't want to let any of them down. And I know that sounds weird because they're strangers. They mean so much more to me than just people. They are the reason that I am able to go out there and live my dream. If it weren't for fans, if it weren't for people spending money on independent professional wrestling, there wouldn't be shows. There wouldn't be a place for me to go out there and do the thing I love. That's not lost on me. They're way more than just fans. They're way, way more than just fans. I, I, I genuinely care about what they think. And I genuinely want them to think that I'm good. He is the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas, the whole shebang, all hearts, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny He steals the show all the time. Be it a five minute match or a 25 minute match, he steals the show. He's winning, Gargano's gonna win. He won last year, he's winning again this year. If there's one thing you can say about me, it's I have this interesting connection with the fans, especially children. I don't know why they look up to me. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I don't, I, 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 it's not, I love it. I tr tr it's one of the, the best things I've ever done in my life. But when I look in the mirror, I don't say like, yeah, man, a lot of little kids just look up to you. Like, I'm just a dude. Like, I'm just, I'm John Gargano. He is my hero. And he always has been my hero since I got into wrestling, since in 2011. Caden, he comes to a lot of uh, the shows that I do in Cleveland, Ohio. He would always bring his signs that says like, Johnny Gargano is my hero. And it was really sweet. And he, he always gives me them. And I always keep them at home. I have a ton of them all over my house. Upon first talking to him, he struck me as the smartest little wrestling fan I'd ever met in my life. And I'm not just talking, you know, he, he watches WWE every now and then. He watches everything. Every independent promotion, he knows it all. And then I, I got to talk to his grandpa, and he told me that Caden was sick. Caden has a blood platelet disorder. He put off a bone marrow transplant just so he can come to the AIW show. He put off a bone marrow transplant just so he can come to a wrestling show. That's mind blowing. And then one day in particular, him and his grandpa came up to me, and his grandpa said, Caden has something for you. Uh, and he pulled this out. I have it with me, actually. This is a hospital bracelet from one of Caden's chemotherapy sessions. Uh, he told me he wanted me to have it because whenever he goes in for therapy, he thinks about me, and it makes him stronger. 
when he when he told me that and when he gave me this it just i don't think it really registered to me how huge this is you know For us as performers, for us as wrestlers, and for us as just human beings, we want to thank you for giving us the honor of coming here tonight and watching us perform for you. I know you're going to go through something very big very soon, and we don't want you to go in this alone, so we got a special little gift for you, buddy. The original AIW championship belt, and it's yours now. Everyone here? It's here for you, okay? If you ever need anything, this is your family. A little boy, a little 12-year-old boy, is going in for chemotherapy. He's fighting a way bigger fight than I've ever had to face in my life. He's faced so many more obstacles than I've had to, and yet, when he goes in for that, he's thinking about me, and it gives him strength? It's just... I don't see myself as a role model at all. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm a 26-year-old kid who lives in Cleveland, Ohio, who gets to put on spandex tights and go in the ring and fight another dude and have people clap for it. That's all I am. But the fact that some people look up to me. Um, I don't know. I'll never understand it, just because uh, how I feel about myself. They go out there and just do everything. You wouldn't imagine it. Just they'll go out there. You think, eh, this match is gonna be terrible, and they'll go out there and just blow your mind. It'll be five stars on the Meltzer scale. <laughs> If I come up with something, if I feel like something is necessary, and even though my body won't like it, but I feel like it'll make the match better, if it'll make people happier, I guess, which is weird because it's me hurting myself, then I have to do it. And if I don't do it, I feel like I'm taking money out of their pocket. I feel like I have to go out there and give 110%, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter how physically injured I am, I just have to do that. And if I don't, then I'm just, I'm not good enough. I don't know. If I don't, I'm just cheating them out of what they came to see. I hold myself in a very high standard when it comes to my performance or when it comes to how I deal with people because yes I am just a dude but people are expecting a certain level out of me I think anymore and as it progressed it's gotten a little higher this is awesome. and this goes back to just not letting wanting to let people down if I'm going out there and you're expecting something good I'm gonna give you something good. There's no way I'm gonna let you down. And on, in some ways, that has been one of my biggest downfalls, I think, because with professional wrestling comes injuries. One time in particular that is probably the scariest, uh, most surreal moment I've ever been a part of. It was the last show at the ECW arena and it was me versus Ricochet and it was a big match. The weekend before that, I hurt my back in West Virginia. And as soon as I heard it, I knew something was wrong. 
I knew it wasn't just a normal back injury like I've had before. I knew it was something far worse than that. And I knew I had this huge show coming up the next weekend. So I didn't tell anyone. And I went to Philadelphia and I wanted to give these people a match they would remember. They were expecting something special and I had to give them something special. Even though my body didn't feel like it could give them something special. So before the match, my legs start feeling really heavy and I can't move around very much. So going into the match, I knew this, this could be bad. About one minute into the match, I lose all feeling in both my legs. And I wrestle for 26 more minutes like that on dead legs. And a lot of people are like, what, why didn't you just end the match? You know, why didn't you just stop? Because I couldn't. Uh, didn't want to let people down. <laughs> the bell rang and I couldn't move anymore. They had to carry me out of the ring. They had to call an ambulance. I spent the night in the Philadelphia hospital. Then I had to fly in a plane the next day and my dad had to physically carry me up the steps and lay me in bed where I was bedridden for five days. I honestly do not remember much of that match. Uh, the thing I remember the most is I was laying there and people were booing because, I don't know, they were booing because I could hardly get up and hardly move and I wasn't giving them the match they wanted. So they were booing. And I just remember feeling so hurt, and not hurt in a physical sense, just hurt in a, it hurt right here, you know? Here I am trying my hardest <laughs> to get through this, and they don't care, you know? That, that brought me back to being a little kid and not feeling, you know, adequate enough. It hurt because I felt like I, I've done so much, you know, and I'm trying to give you more. I just, I don't have all of it right now, you know? I can't physically do it. If I could physically get up and do this, I would. Wrestling for me was just a place where I was accepted. It's where these people genuinely care to see me and genuinely care to talk to me and genuinely care to see me go out there and do what I do. I was never anything special. I don't view myself as anything special. I don't view myself as anything extraordinary. Uh, I don't like any of my own matches. Uh, I'm not the guy after a match that comes in the back and says like, yep, that's how it's done, guys. I'm just like, oh, you know, it could be better, you know. It should be better for them. Uh, I'm that guy. Uh, and that's probably something to do with my childhood and never feeling good enough. And I'm sure there's a lot of hidden self-confidence issues and something in there. But uh, I'm just me. I will always just be me. I am not pretending to be anything. At the end of the day, I need to look myself in the mirror and be happy with the person I'm seeing and be okay with my decisions. And I just didn't want to do anything that would hurt that or let people that I care about down. Hey,